welcome back. Last I checked, I'm still here, Levy. It is your daily dose of news on this Thursday, March 30th, 2017. And I'm very, very happy because this is the part of the show that essentially, I'm, uh, you know, I live for. And it's Thursday, it's time for Nasty Woman, which means I'm usually in studio with two women. Um, that's a rare issue these day, this day. Um, uh, let me just introduce first, okay? I'm happy to be joined by the one and only Sarah Tuttle Singer. She's a writer, journalist with the Times of Israel. Hello to you. I know, she's another proof that we blondes are incredibly smart. <laughs> and in addition to that, of course, I-24 News international correspondent Bianca Zanini. Hello. Hi. Hello. I know, she's a woman. Not who, blonde, but... Not blonde, but um, oh, that means you you're like... I'm blonde, too, and that's right. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> No, you are. You are. <laughs> okay. This week, though, we are all gathered here for Nasty Woman because Hillary Clinton <laughs> made one of her first public appearances since losing the presidential election last November. And she focused on issues facing women today. But this is a time to, first of all, take a look at the woman that I think we all can say, you know, it's hard to come out after such a defeat and speak again publicly. She did that. Let's take a look at how she did it in the following ABC News report. Break it down right after. It is great to be back in San Francisco. Hillary Clinton was given a standing ovation. This is where the former presidential hopeful feels most comfortable among those who envision a country that, in her words, is stronger together. Today, she shared her new mantra, which popped into her head during those long walks in the woods. Resist, insist, persist, enlist. While Clinton did not mention President Trump today, she criticized the lack of women in Washington. Women's representation in the current administration in Washington, for example, is the lowest it's been in a generation. Clinton was a prized keynote speaker of the 28th Professional Business Women of California Conference. This year, people signed up in record numbers, many say, to find support in a climate of hostility. ABC 7 News anchor Cheryl Jennings was one of the moderators. We are now living in a very politically challenging time. Many people are feeling excluded, not included. I think people are here about hope, they're here about faith, they're here about ambition, and they're here to make a difference. There were lighter moments that included actress Rosario Dawson. I, I was saying because of these, I just feel like, control. I just want to be like, right? Nah, I'm all grown up. She was seriously doing that backstage the entire time. <laughs> the conference was a time to open up to possibilities and recognize that there is more that unites women than divides them. As you said, I'm joined in the studio by Sarah Tuttle Singer. She's a writer and journalist with the Times of Israel and the viral voice of reason for many. I am quoting our editor, Wen Bianca Zanini, who is one of my nastiest women. Um, I, we, just saw, we just saw Hillary Clinton come out again. I want us to talk about women in the 21st century and, um, and women with the current administration um, in the United States. Melania, um, uh, Melania Noss also had a chance to come out yesterday. She was hosting an event. I want us to take a look at her because that's the first lady now of the United States. Let's take a look. We must continue once again to shine the light on the horrendous atrocities taking place in neighborhoods around the corner and around the globe, where innocent families are crying out to live in safety. We must continue to fight injustice in all its forms, in whatever scale or shape it takes in our lives. Together, we must declare that the era of allowing their brutality against women and children is over, while affirming that the time for empowering women around the world is now. Sarah, I'm assuming you covered the elections um, uh, um, uh, in the United States. Followed it very closely. Followed it very closely. Women in the um, uh, 21st century, I think, the persona of women for the Western world, how would you say it changed? In your mind, I'm asking from the elections or in, in general? In general, honest. yeah, in the eye of that. You know, it's, it's really an interesting question, and I think what I'm noticing is this trend where we have moved from a place where the word feminism was a dirty word. At least it was 10 years ago. That's true. I and think some places it's still. And I, it makes me happy that you say that we're moving away from well, that. I think in certain progressive circles it's being embraced. I'm seeing men who are championing the word, who are declaring that they're feminist, and they're also asking what that means, how they can support women, instead of telling us 
this is how I'm going to support right. you. They're saying, how can we be there your I ally? Quote the, um, Canadian God, that, the, the Canadian Prime Minister mm -hmm. is not just instilling, you know, strength in our in our girls, it's also, um, you know, telling boys how to treat women. Exactly, yeah. that you don't tell, a, you don't treat, you don't raise your little girl to fight how not herself. to get raped, you raise your boy not, not to, to rape. rape. And that's a conversation that parents are having. I just did a panel with three incredible MKs over at APEC, um, Mirab Michaeli, Tamar Zandberg, and Rachel Azaria. Yeah. And we were talking about women in Israel, women in the world, and, and feminism, and about half the audience were men. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, how wonderful is that? And it would, no, no, it, no, 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 no. And, and very, very true in that respect. Is those is are the great. ones we need to hear it. How would you say, and this is a question almost to the two of you, because Bianca, you're a novice to this country, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Sarah, I mean, clearly you did not grow up in this country. No. Women in, in the Middle East, let's say women in Israel to you, how would you describe their role? Well, it, it depends. I mean, you heard the expression, two Jews, three opinions. I mean, it, I would say this is we all, true, yeah, too. We are, clearly all of us, some, well, you know, some of us, well, clearly you and I have been to Passover dinners, but yes. <laughs> sure, people will say, you know, women's rights are championed here and women are doing so well and they can serve in the army, but we have a long way to go. So I mean, if, if I want to have an abortion, I have to sit before a committee and plead my case. If I am married, which I am not, but if I were married and I didn't want uh -huh. to have another child, I would have to lie to this committee and say, this child is not, not my, my husband's. husband's. How he, and, and that's, who knows where that gets written down. And, and to, to have to plead my case over, over my body, is, it's, it's a shanda, it's, it's a travesty. Yeah. Uh, also, women make less than men. We just make less money we than men. We make less than men all over the world, girls. Yep. You know, no matter, I think that's, here it's especially yeah. striking. What do you think? Yeah. Keeping it here in, uh, in Israel, I wanted to know, there's been a lot of talk about if you can be a feminist and a Zionist at the same mm. time. Uh, you've written someplace that you define yourself as both. What, uh, why, do you, why did you feel the need to come out and say that, and what's your argument? Well, I, I'm a feminist, yeah. I'm a Zionist, I'm also against the occupation. And when Linda Sarsour wrote, or was interviewed in The Nation, the title of the article said, you, you know, you can't be a feminist, or Linda Sarsour says you can't yeah, yeah. be a feminist and a Zionist. I was dismayed. So I wrote a letter, an open letter on Facebook, tagged her in it, saying, of course you can, and, and you, you, you can hold these things together. all true, and we can work together and support our sisters on both sides. She responded to her credit. She actually took the time to respond to say that she did not say what the article was titled. Yeah, she, she actually did not say you can't be a Zionist and a feminist. She said you can't be a fem uh, you can't be uncritical of Israel and a feminist. You can't talk about equality. Right. And ignore the massive inequality here in this country, and there is massive inequality. There is in massive this inequality, entirely so. Um, Sarah, this has been an amazing conversation. We have very little time left for the female figure of the oh week. Oh my God! I think you're going to love the female time, figure. Very really quickly, because really I think quickly. we're doing just one. The female figure yeah. of the week is going to be female animals, <gasps> yes. not human, because there's very this report. That, do this really quickly. Yes. Okay, a report shows that uh, female animals suggests that female animals uh, disguise themselves, makes, makes themselves uglier to avoid male attention yes. and sexual harassment from their male uh, species counterparts. So <laughs> um, I think that that resonates for a lot of women. No, no, and there we have it. I think no count in my world. ear, but still, I think now I have the count, and there we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, Sarah, please continue the amazing uh, work. Thank you so much. Bianca, I'm crazy in love with you. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere.